Good day, fellow investors. Peter Lynch just said that index fund investors are missing the boat. And in this video, I want to give you five reasons why is that? And if you are an index fund investor, why you should consider alternatives and also how? Of course, index funds have performed remarkably over the last 40 years. Really, really remarkable. 40 years ago, if you invested 100, now you would have 45 times your money approximately. And especially from the lows of March 2009, February, the index is up sevenfold. That is really, really remarkable, especially when you add dividends. But this was the past. What about the future? Can we expect the same performance over the last 40 years? It's 12, 13% per year. Can we expect the same performance next 10 20, 30 years, or as Peter Lynch says, is it better to invest elsewhere? I also think that index funds are too risky for what they offer now. And I'll first discuss what Peter Lynch recently said in an interview, and then dig into five factors that will make you consider the risk and reward when it comes to investing. It's always about the risk and reward. And the risk and reward changes over time. Of course, here with a long term price earnings ratio of what was it? 10, then it's extremely cheap to invest in the SP 500 and you cannot lose. But now, seven times higher, the story is different. Peter Lynch recently did a chat with Bloomberg Bay State Business Podcast where he's donating his art collection to Boston College and he's also been asked about his thoughts on investing. And of course, his thoughts on investing are those of a stock picker and why it's better to invest in stocks and why going all in on passive investing is all wrong. He said that the move to passive is a mistake and how also his active guys at Fidelity Magellan beat the market for 10, 20, 30 years and how he thinks they will keep doing it. To summarize, people are missing the boat here. And he also mentioned how 20 other fund managers beat the market and how it is possible if you focus on the right things. And we'll mention that in a second. If we go to the performance, this is Peter Lynch performance from 77 to 90, 13 years, I think he made approximately 29% per year where $1,000 invested at the beginning of his Fidelity Magellan management would turn out in $28,000, obliterating the S&P 500. But if we go to Fidelity Magellan, so their normal page, Fidelity, and then you look at the Fidelity Magellan Fund, of course, they are outperformed last year, the last three years, the last five years, S&P 500, 10 years, the S&P 500, but this is the most remarkable life performance, 16.24% per year year, which is really, really staggering and beats any index out there. Also from Barron's interview with Peter Lynch, he stated how his wife invested 750 into her pension fund over six years for a total of 3,750. Since then, they have withdrawn 3 million and the portfolio was, when his wife passed away, 8 million. So he turned 3,000 into 11 million for his wife. This is Peter Lynch. And Peter Lynch is now saying to avoid index funds, invest in what you know, not in stocks that go up. Index funds have gone up, 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 and up. And he's asking you, Peter Lynch style, do you know what you are investing in? I've made a few videos on Peter Lynch on his book, best book to read for investments, one up on Wall Street. I'll put all the links to these videos in the description below. And also I'll put the link to my free 
totally free comprehensive stock market investing course and if you go to the course curriculum you see here half of the book summarized so for more help also the links to those videos you can enjoy here the summary of Peter Lynch's amazing book also join the course for more investing education how to do better than index funds i think we will do it why do i think that by investing in what you know in good businesses will do better than index funds well because the risk and reward is different when it comes to investing in what you know in a good business with a good dividend yield and current index funds let me explain as i already said this is something very important that people miss index funds are generally okay nothing wrong with index funds you own a sector an economy a country whatever it represents however as the index fund is up seven times since the 2009 low it also skews the risk and reward it can't be the same at whatever price so the first risk now is that you're paying 7x what others paid in the past if we go to bloomberg you are paying 120 times your hourly wage now while others paid 20. so the risk reward is extremely risky now compared to the price you're paying risk is first and foremost a function of price you are paying for something which means that now compared to 2009 the expected return is one seventh and the risk is 7x so it's not the same index fund now than it was 10 years ago 40 years ago and that's something people fail to understand and that's why also lynch says avoid index funds and why to avoid index funds because this is not something new this is not something for now over the last 100 years it's not uncommon to see 22 years of zero returns for index funds 25 years especially after these big booms booms 12 years and now another boom 17 years and then zero so it's not a given that it will be this is the most similar to today it's not a given that there will be 10 percent returns next over the next decade two decades it can be also zero with 50 percent crashes in between which will make it very ugly especially if people pension funds expect 10 percent returns per year ahead and they do risk number two let's talk about yield if the price is high then the yield is low and the current yield is 1.26 percent similar to the yield in august 2000 just before the dot-com crash and the ugliness that followed so low yield simply means low returns if the yield would be here at seven percent then the return would be much much higher and that's a given that's a natural you can't expect the upside to be the same as it was here where the yield was more than double than current also if we look to the earnings yield when the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio is above 30 you can expect long-term returns below four or five percent and if you focus on investments we should be able to find better than this returns another risk going forward for index funds is the fed interest rates there is one reason why index funds have boomed over the last 10 years money printing low interest rates the fed saved your ass so if we go to the federal funds effective rate since index funds became popular especially since index fund did really really good interest rates were close to 20 percent and now those are zero so when interest rates are 20 percent you compare that to investments and you expect a dividend yield of 7 10 percent now that interest rates are at zero people are happy with a dividend yield of 1.26 percent the risk there is what if those interest rates revert 
like it has been the case in the past. So bad times for investments started in 1968-1969 when inflation and interest rates started to going up, up and up. So this is another risk for index funds that one should just think, okay, what if this happens? How am I protected? What happens to me? Will I reach my financial goals? That's the key to think about. Next risk. Of course, if you buy index funds, you buy the most expensive thing out there. Because if you look at the components, the biggest company out there is Apple and it has 7% of the S&P 500 that has about 506 stocks. One stock has 7%. Microsoft 6.3%. So if you buy an index fund now or if you hold, you are holding the most expensive of the expensive. How expensive is Apple stock? Well, this chart tells you it is a lot more expensive than it was just a year ago, two years ago. And here it was 3-4% of the index and now it's 6-7% of the index because the price is higher and the market capitalization is higher. The dividend yield of Apple is 0.49. With the buybacks, they make about 100 billion per year in a good year. So that's a return of 3%. And that's what you can expect from Apple and the index. The question is, is 3% enough for your retirement goals? Calculating, of course, the positive, the growth rate, so the reward, but also the risks coming from other companies like Xiaomi or something like that, that we'll discuss in the next video. So I don't like index funds because they simply are weighted by market capitalization. And so you just invest like the herd. And from my experience, the herd is just mediocre. If you want mediocre in life, then you wouldn't be watching this channel. So here we are to go for the top 1%. So if you want the same, stick and learn. And then another factor is betting on only one horse. What horse? The Fed, the ECB, the Western governments, because all the weight is towards, especially the United States market, but index funds are weighted to protection here to US dollar, Euro, and also keeping things as those are forever. This is the budget office debt projection for the US government. And it is projected that it will reach 202% of GDP by 2051. So it will double from now. But Look at this, their projections over the next 10 years are stable and only then it will explode because of all the terrible fundamentals. Why do you think these projections are stable here? Well, just because if they project good things over 10 years, they keep their job because the politicians give them their jobs. So they just project those fundamentals reasons, destroying the fundamentals push them 10 years forward, not saying like crazy going around, this is a catastrophe. This is a catastrophe. They're just not allowed to tell us. So from 16.8 trillion, the US government debt will go to 133 trillion by the end of 2051. The value of the dollar is doomed. Same for the euro. And they are the ones protecting the stock market, your consumption, etc., etc. So that's another risk that you incur if you go for index funds. And I want to add two factors when it comes to investing. We have seen the yield of the S&P 500. The first factor is it's your money, it's your life. How does 1.26% yield lead you to your financial goals. It might be okay. It will be 2% growth, 3% inflation. You have a return of 5%. If that is good for you, okay. If you can accept the ups and downs and the risks, okay. If you want better, if you want 7, 8%, that makes a huge difference over a lifetime, then you might 
want to invest more or you just check okay what's the risk and reward of the index funds what's the risk and reward of my student debt of my mortgage of my this of my this of my business can i put my money elsewhere and that thinking it's already not passive but i think it adds huge value to your life just put okay index funds now how do those fit my life 10 years ago those were great for 90% of the population. Now, I wouldn't say the same. And that's the key. Just check how it fits your life. Of course, if you want to get rich, you just need to do the right thing a few times over your lifetime or avoid doing the wrong thing. But that's not easy. As Charlie Munger says, why should it be easy to do something that, if done well, two or three times, will make your family rich for life. This is not easy, so it requires effort. If you're ready for effort, if you're ready for investing, I think it's worth it. The benefit is also you get control, more control over your financial life, and I think it's doable. Why it's worth it? Because you spent 40 years, 40 plus hours a week working for money, but few people spend one hour per week looking what their money does for them. That's again a irrationality, a huge one that you can, with a little bit of education, adjust and reap huge benefits better than the risk reward of index funds. So, what's the solution? Just look at the businesses. Okay, Apple 3% plus the growth, but there is also a risk. Can I find something better for the same risk? SAP 500, the yield, the growth 5%, like Apple, let's say. Can I find something better? And then the message is, you don't have to be Peter Lynch. You just need to find those one, two, three investments over your lifetime that will set you up for good forever. Index funds, yes. Those that bought at the right time in their lifetime did really, really good. As I said, index funds are good. Nothing wrong with them. But I wonder if this will set you up for good like it did for the person that bought here or here or here or here. That's the difference, just the price. The key is to know the price paid versus the value delivered and then compare things in your life consequently. What is a good business that will be there in 10 years? Apple will likely be there in 10 years for 3%. Can I find something for 5, 7%, 15%? That's something that leads to better financial rationale, reasoning and investing. For those who want to start learning, except for my free investment course, there is also this table where I calculate values and possible returns and the research for a lot of companies. This is the public one. If you want to see the premium one, what I really invest in, you can check everything I do and see the research on my research platform, also my portfolio. So feel free to do that if you are interested. So I'll keep doing videos. I'll keep analyzing stocks. It is on you whether you'll put the effort in or not to see if there are better options than index funds for your life, for your money and your financial goals. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.